Hey folks, so it's a rare daytime adventure in the Rocket Lab, um, but we're doing our last set of tip-to-tip -tip fiberglass work. Um, well, this thing's absolute trash. We're gonna get a different one. Let's see, this one looks better. Ooh, she's a little rough. All right, so we're here doing the last set of tip-to-tip -tip fiberglass um, on our doorknob, lock doorknob project. Um, so normally this is done to reinforce fins, like if you're going, you know, over Mach 2 and you're worried about fin flutter or you have thin fins. I'm doing this solely for durability because I'm going to fly these on frozen lake beds in Maine. Um, so I don't want my fins popping off every time it lands hard on the ice. So, you know, a traditional layup would be you, you put a strip right down the fillet, then you do one about two thirds the way up and then you do a final tip to tip. Um, I'm trying to add as little weight as possible just because this is such a short stubby rocket. If I put too much weight on the back end, I got to put more weight in the nose cone to keep it balanced, stable. Um, so I opted to go with one layer of six ounce fiberglass um, tip to tip purely just to try to keep the fins on the rocket um, if it slams down on the ice like say say the main parachute doesn't open and I come down on a drogue or something so that's the purpose here um, I started by using just some you know cardboard craft paper and making a nice template um, and once that was done I cut out uh, fiberglass using that just kind of tracing it um, one thing to note I was thinking I have four fins, uh, two sides. I need eight, you know, sets of this cut. Uh, totally wrong, because one piece of cloth covers two sides of a fin. So I cut eight of these shapes out. I only needed four. So just kind of working late, not thinking. I uh, made some extra work for myself. Um, but so this is the, the final of four layups that we'll do, and I figured I would video it. Um, so yeah, made the template, cut out the cloth. I've got some epoxy mixed up. What I've already done is I went and sanded all the surfaces I'm gonna bond to with uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Um, you know, traditional thinking was, oh, the rougher the surface, the better, because the epoxy will have more crevices to mechanically bond to, which there's some merit to that, but it seems like all the new research says, you know, finer grits are actually better. You're creating, you know, albeit smaller ridges, more of them, so there's actually more surface area and you're, you're promoting more of a chemical bond versus mechanical, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of research on Rocketry Forum about it if you're really that interested. But long story short, 220 grit, sanded that, wiped everything down twice with uh, denatured alcohol. I used um, some lint-free cloths. We'll grab one. Basically, when we had our kid, the hospital gave us a bunch of these to use as, like, baby wipes. Um, they're just dry, like, gauze pads. Um, so I have a bunch of those kicking around. That's what I use to wipe everything down. Paper towel will tend to put, like, paper fibers and everything. So try to avoid that. Um, yeah, so I got some epoxy mixed up. We're ready to, to throw that on here. So my method, um, first time I did this, I tried to just wet the whole thing out, and it was an absolute disaster. Um, this is the first rocket I've ever done this on, so it's kind of a learning experience. I found now if I work it one half at a time, it's much more manageable. So I basically tack them in where I want with some clips. I'm just using chip clips. Um, so we'll wet this side out first, undo the clips, pull ourselves back over, do the other side, and have at it. Um, so yeah, you can follow along with that process. So I've uh, just took a 60 cent chip brush from uh, Harbor Freight and cut it down. That's what I use kind of as a tool. Gonna put some gloves on. Always good to use your PPE with this epoxy because you can get sensitized to it and then allergic to it over time. So try not to touch it if you can avoid it. Whenever I'm sanding it, obviously I have like a respirator on. Um, I don't find the fumes to be too obnoxious. So and plus when I'm talking to the camera, I figured I wouldn't wear a mask just laying this up. So yeah, the other nice thing about sanding is I'm using Teflon coated peel ply. 
I, I don't know if it's true or not, but in my mind, I think some of that Teflon might impregnate on the, the surface here. So whether it's true or not, I think sanding it good will help remove any of that residual um, Teflon product and help with bonding, hopefully. Maybe I'm just scouring it into the surface and doing more harm than good, but you know, maybe someone that's much smarter than me with composites could comment in the on the video. So we're gonna start just painting a layer of epoxy on our surfaces. To do the fins, I like to kind of make three stripes diagonal like this. Um, and then basically pull from the fill it up. And hopefully that's enough to wet out. Looks like I could have used some more. And the other decision you got to kind of make is um, you can either cut your cloth like an inch larger and then trim it after. Um, I've kind of decided I'm going to trim it a little less than the full width and not trim the edges except for the back edge I made larger and I'll trim that. Um, since I'm not really doing this for a strength, I figured it didn't really need to wrap all the way around the leading edge. Um, so I'm just trying to make less trimming work for myself. If this was definitely going like, you know, faster than the speed of sound, I would probably wrap it all the way to the tip here, but we're not doing that. Cool. So now I'm just going to take this and fold it down, push it down into my fillet first, using the brush to help wet it out. And then as I go up, I try to push down towards the root of the fin. Um, if you pull up, you're gonna end up pulling the cloth out of your fillet and creating a, an air gap here. So as you're wetting out, try to, you know, it's not a forceful push down, but push, you know, towards your, your fin root if you can. And I just want to try to pull this cloth towards this edge a little bit, which you can totally do. Bring it out. So you can see the cloth, it was already kind of coming away from that I'm going to push it back down in there. And then I'm going to do the other half. You can lay this right on here and you don't have to worry about it too bad. And don't be shy with the epoxy in that fillet. If you, if you try to use, if you use too little, you end up with all these air gaps in there and that's where you really need most of your strength. Seated in the fillet really well. Go ahead and just and start wetting out the rest of it. So I would say don't let a tip to tip intimidate you. Um, a lot of people say do it on a cheap rocket, like a get a little Estes kit, <laughs> do it on that. I totally support that. Um, it just so happens this is the first time I've ever done it, and it's on my L2 cert rocket. <laughs> Um, and you know, honestly, the first one was a little messy. I learned a lot and now I have no hesitations doing tip to tip on any rocket after this. So basically just get one under your belt. So again, another thing I learned, um, I originally tried to do the peel plan one shot, uh, cut it into sections. You'll thank yourself. Um, you're trying to get this to lay as flat as possible and it really doesn't have much stretch to it. So if you're, you know, trying to go over multiple curves with one sheet, it's not going to work out well. So I've split it in half and find that much easier to work with. Um, now that I've done a little more research, I see a lot of people actually do it in like thirds. So they'll do you know, maybe one strip on the fillet, 
one strip up, one strip down the middle, and then mirror that. that that's another acceptable approach. I just happened to cut these in one big sheet, realized it was too hard, and cut them down, cut them down the middle. So again, we want that fillet, nice and point, and you're just wetting this out. I find working diagonally on the fin helps me from pulling it out of the root. That's just my technique. Your mileage will vary. Now let's do this and see what happens if we reuse some old peel fly. We'll see if the West System Gudgeon Brothers come out of the sky and smite me down. Yeah, that's the worst that can happen. Cool. And that's that. You can see it's like sweating out the excess epoxy, which is nice. Um, and it'll give a nice finish because the six ounce can be a little rough and require a lot of primer if you don't get a good finish on it. So this helps. Yeah, so we'll be back in, <laughs> it's so cold down here, probably 12 hours. So tomorrow um, we'll trim it and peel it and then we're done with fiberglassing for the booster section anyways, so. All right, I'm just gonna take a nice new razor blade and you follow. Along here, you can trim this because it's still not fully cured. Oh, right there it is. <laughs> um, but this is that kind of leather stage you always talk about with fiberglass. It's it's like semi cured with a nice clean laser with a nice clean razor blade and kind of angling it down towards the surface here. You can trim a lot of this stuff easily to save you some headache while you're sanding. There we go. And this just comes right off because it's that Teflon coated stuff. You can see all the extra epoxy just kind of sweats through there. So there's just this perfectly smooth texture. Here's where, you know, you get a little air pocket there. We'll have to fill that, no big deal. This fillet, this is just debris. Pretty smooth surface, ready for sanding, light sanding.